Welcome everyone. It is a Friday night and we are going live. Looking at Fry tonight and also some other odds and ends on a late Friday night. Hopefully we'll catch you for a little bit tonight. If not, then uh, replay. So if you're on the replay crew, be sure to leave a note, a question, or a point down below. And I will be happy to respond. These you're looking at are one of the latest batches of uh, German Blue Rams. They're doing very well. So when the fish come running up to the top of the water looking for food, that's usually a good, good sign. Yeah, they're in good shapes. Hey, Glitch Aquatics, welcome. And we are going to talk about live foods tonight. I want to just take you through the steps of what I'd be doing, what I would do on a typical day. These um, fry and these tanks will going to get fed, and we're going to talk about that. Looks like over here some of the breeders are also uh, looking at me like, uh, come on, it's dinner time. I think it's dinner time. Okay, wow. Black Ram Wigglers, that's great. That's great. Um, I... I see batches, I get batches of eggs, and I'm just glad that they hatch or they're fertile. Uh, sometimes the black rams. In fact, let's just do this while you're here, and we're here. I just want to do a quick check on some of these tanks of black rams. Um, these are these are the rams that, come on, come on, come on, focus, there we go. And maybe I should have cleaned it last night. The tank, at least the glass, so it doesn't. And I'm just checking to see if there's any eggs up here. It looks like from our fin damage, he's been beating her up a little bit. I have to watch that very closely. If she starts to get too much stressed out, it's time to get them separated. You know, they're not good together. I was hoping they would go down on eggs, but let's see. No eggs. And it's been a while from the algae buildup. I can see. Hi, Toby. Welcome. I can see that there's no, no, no action in this tank. And we've got some empty tanks right now, waiting for a pair that might be uh, spurring um, us on for some more development. We'll have to check this out over here, the uh, older rams. See if they're going to uh, do anything. Hi Shady Grady, welcome to Friday night at Fish Easy. Did I mention that? This is Fish Easy live stream. And we are on the 13th of January. Let's see also this pair here. Uh, no, there's not a pair. I had to pull the male out. And it looks like she's recovered well, so I'm going to really put her back into the... What do you call that? The the pool. Uh, a lot of glare here, but I'm trying to get you a good shot of her. I think she's ready to go back in the pool. I uh, can't see a thing because of the, I have the lights on. Welcome, fish donkey. It's water change time, of course. And this pair over here... Um, they were my ho more hopefuls, but let's see if we have any eggs. I don't know. This pair here. Hmm. The female, she's looking for food. She sees me and sees something, but let's see. Looking at the plate, though, I don't see any eggs. Nope. Nothing. Nothing from them. They're, they don't spawn as as frequently as the German Blues and so that's something to bear in mind so I have to be very patient and work with them a little bit closer that means keep a good eye on them too and uh, especially when uh, the male gets ideas and the female's not ready now she has been hanging out look at the way she hangs out over there I don't think she's got eggs Sometimes when I see him hanging out over there, I see she's kind of picking at something. That's rather suspect. But if she just moves on, no, she's just picking at something. She's not guarding eggs. And while we're here, we'll take a quick look at the uh, threadfin rainbows. They're okay. There was one fish in here in this group that was kind of... Um, I don't know, it was kind of uh, getting a little beat up the other day. I, I could see it had a lot of marks on it, but it looks fine now. 
seems to be okay. All right, so here's um, here's bare bottom. You're talking about bare bottom. Well, this one's got a lot of getting algae on it, but these rams are growing fine. Got to give them uh, good uh, changes. Hi, hi, how are you doing? Stubbs Aquatics is with us in the house. So these guys are growing well, so they won't. Be, it won't be long before they'll be ready to move on. Okay, so that's the uh, um, some of the fry. We're going to get busy here right now and do a few things. Really, you got three pairs of thread fins. They're not easy to find, you know. Only sometimes they have them at the shops. Sometimes they don't. This is the strangest thing I noticed yesterday or the, this week. There's only there's only five blue a cars in here, but I put six in here. But I'm telling you, there's only five. And I turned every single one of these little tubes, and I turned over the, the pot, and I looked everywhere for evidence that one had died. And there's nothing. Mayor, how are you? I'm so glad to see you tonight. These are electric blue acaras. And a fish this big, if it should die, you would think you would see some... I don't know, you would see some evidence, maybe? But it just plumb disappeared. And it's not the smallest of the group either, because the small one is here. I think that's a female. I just got the I just get the impression that's the female. But honestly, the other ones I don't know if they completely devoured it, if it did die, but I never I don't remember one dying. But somehow that happens. You look in a tank and it's like, wait a minute. What happened? Um, this week, uh, I've not been able to come along and do the uh, breeding setup yet. I'm still doing that. This Maybe this weekend I'll have a chance. So we're going to take a look here in a few minutes. But I'm anxious to show you the results of another week at the egg trap. One of the things I really love, love about this tank is, is, is because it's got the dark gravel, the fish themselves look gorgeous. And look at when I put a group, several groups in there, I'm just kind of holding it. I don't know if the glare is going to prevent this, but the Danios are rich in color. And they're coming right up to the front screen. They think uh, they're going to get fed right now. Because when they see me, they start starting to associate with food rather than just running away. But you'll notice that this one, like, it's right here. They're beautiful fish. They have colors. They have yellow and and they have the kind of the reddish. They have some bars. They look like little miniature salmons. Salmon fish. They're an amazing Danio. They're not at all... Uh, like other ones, and they really school together well. But um, I've noticed they've darkened up, and they're doing well on this in this tank. They're starting to really feel happy, and even the um, other fish I put in here also are looking good. And I think it's the twice a day baby brine shrimp, twice a day, morning and evening. Now, when I do that. I have been getting some results and so in looking at the trap today I came home I haven't I haven't done anything I haven't looked for eggs or anything let's see let's see if we can spot anything I haven't seen any activity today sometimes a fish little fish will go zipping by or or maybe I'll uh, what I've been doing is a suggestion I got from one person but here a little build up of uh, I guess it's from the feedings and whatever else gets sucked up in the egg trap you know, all the debris that falls down below it starts to collect in this bottom okay that that little right there I think I see in the center of the screen that looks like a fry I'm gonna test that out right now okay so we're going to see if that's a fry. It looks like one, right? Can you see it? I don't know if you can see it right. 
Oh, the light. Where did that light come from? There we go. I can also sometimes look underneath. And looking underneath, looking up, I can all sometimes spot fry, but they are surely little slight slivers. There's not a lot to them. So this is a little technique of what I, I've been doing. Uh, if I see something right away, I will get my, my eyedropper out and I'll get it out. So I'm going to remove the lid. And unfortunately it is kind of overflowing, but I, I think the eggs and the baby, the, the fry, any hatched fry, tend to stay at the bottom the first couple of days. So Now in this muck here, there might be some things, but I don't know what it is, you see. I don't know what it is. So what we're going to do is uh, I'm going to, to pull out. What I do is I just pull these out. Okay. Makes it easier because what I'm going to do is I'm going to siphon out the bottom. This was a suggestion by one of you folks. Every day just siphon out the bottom. So I've been doing that. So what I do is I siphon it out into a glass platter. Now over here is the glass platter. So it has water from the previous day, yesterday. So what I've done is uh, I'll set it here and I'll double check it. I'm looking for anything that might move. I don't see anything. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just I don't I don't toss the water because you just you just never know. So what I'm going to do for now is I'm going to because I'm doing this one-handed. I don't normally do this one-handed. Um should have given myself some space, huh? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just pour the water into the below. Okay, hold on a second. I got to take the lid off. It is off. It is gone. So then what I do is I just pour the water into this container here below. So what I'm doing basically is harvesting anything that I missed. So that water might have a fry in it, might have eggs that eventually might hatch later. It's kind of hard to know. I just save it because you can always check it later. And what we're going to do is, uh, I'm going to use this glass, this glass item. I like to use this as a little tabletop. And uh, let's see if I can get any debris out. Okay. Now, here's the trick. I also use this device for catching any little fry. It's a shot glass with the um, with the eyedropper okay so I'm going to just go ahead and I'm going to siphon out the bottom into this container here and that'll give us a nice uh, clear lighted thing to see so how am I going to do that and let you watch at the same time is a good question Sure, we're gonna just try this. Let's try changing the camera around, and then uh, I'm gonna try doing a little setup kind of a remote so you can see what I'm doing. Let's see if you can see that. Uh, that'd be need to be a little lower here. We'll try that. Can you see the tank the box? Okay. Yeah, let's we'll see if you can see that from a distance, it looks like. I wonder if I can even zoom in to see. No, it doesn't let me. If I zoom, it just goes straight to the center. Okay. Hold on, I got another idea. Let's try using a bucket. I have buckets here. There we go. There we go. Perfect. That's much better. So, 
now you can see what I'm doing. So um, we're going to take a look here at what's in the bottom of that reader box. So I get it. I get it. I get this. This is a um, like a quarter inch tube. So what I'm going to do is just quickly siphon out whatever's at the bottom. So I start the siphon and I just quickly suck up anything. Just kind of clean it all out once a day. If I see a fish kind of just zooming around, that's when I'll quickly uh, try to get it. Otherwise I'm just cleaning it up. Looking for anything that might be on the bottom of this thing. Check for any uh, fish that are floating around. Maybe some that are stuck to the side. Okay, that's it. And my plate is actually quite full. So let me put this down. And then I'm going to get my Get this with both hands. It's kind of full. You gotta watch it, you know. I, wish, I might set it up eventually so I can have it closer to the tank. That might be the best way to handle it, huh? Okay. Now join me. What we're going to do is we're going to take a look at what we just siphoned up, look for any fish, and see if we can catch any. Uh, I'll use a flashlight too, that might help. Okay. So I set it down here. And now what I'm going to do is take a good look and see if we can catch some fry. They actually don't swim a lot. Okay, it looks like looks like there's one. There's a worm. The tritus worm also. Zipping along. Look at that. Hmm. I believe that's a fish. Looks like one. Okay, so now what am I going to do with it is I'm going to put it in this container. This one was from last week and as you can see our results from last week are great. Look at, look at all the fry we've been able to get out of that egg trap. That is a egg trap designed and made by Blake's Aquatics. And um, thank you, Blake. It's taken a little tweaking to get it to work right, but mostly, I mean, tweaking the fish to get them to want to lay. But once they started doing it, this is what we got. There's about a dozen fish in this one, and they're a week, almost going on two weeks old. And then the next week, every day, I will put the fry into this one. Let me see if I can spot it. I know they've started to swim. Some of them have started to swim. They're at the top. But what I can do is I'm going to pull the lid off. It's, it's a blue lid that kind of diffuses the light. But for the purpose of today, showing what's in here, I think it would be nice if... I had a little bit brighter. Hold on a second. I'll let you see what I'm doing. Uh, what I'll do is just kind of do this. And I can you can see what I'm doing and then I'll bring you close up again after that. So this is um, each one of these containers. Has a has a lid. Here's an easy way to look at it. It's 
the glass uh, it came from the dollar store. It looks like they're used for vases, flowers, and whatnot. And then I have my air supply right here. A lid, the hole in it for bringing the air in and something for the air to escape. Air stone and that keeps splashing. The splash guard too works perfect. Now it also works as a light diffuser because I have this LED light and it's just too bright. This way the fish don't feel like they're uh, under the bright lights. So what I'm doing is um, going to just, for the purpose of looking, having a look-see, I'm just going to, okay, let's see what we're doing in this tank. This is from this week. So let's take a look close up. Okay. Do we see any fish? Oh my. They're starting to hatch and starting to swim, it looks like. Hmm. It's the it's it's all about the focus. There we go. Gotta get it in focus. So I see there's quite a good number there. As you can see we we're, we're collecting wow. Thank you, Chris Stubbs Aquatics. Thank you for the link. And as you can see, um, we've got a good number of fry. The only the only problem is I don't know what fry they are. Are they the Daniels or are they the CPDs? I'm going to throw a mop in that tank and see if the uh, Luminatus rainbow fish are also going to spawn. But this is really making me feel great tonight. Look at all those little fry. Now, question. How do you feed fry that, like, oh, you haven't introduced our, our new one, right? Let's see if we can catch him. So the first thing is we got to catch him before we worry about feeding him. Let's see if he's still there. Or does he move? Looks like he moved. These guys will Okay, th these these guys Mmm he's moved. So that was a fish for sure, not a stick. Now the trick is finding him. Oh he's in the corner. There he is. See in the corner? Right there. Beautiful. Hey, that's the good stuff right there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, in fact, I'm going to try the, I'm going to try instead of the, since he's in the corner, I'm not going to use the eyedropper. I'm going to use a turkey baster. Let's see if I can get him. Oh, I can't bend it. It's too big on this shelf. We'll do the eyedropper. Okay, we'll do this. So I just do this. Okay, sneaking up. Oh, he's moving. Just getting startled. Okay, did I get him? Did he shoot away? Ah, did I, did I get him? Good question. Anybody see him in there? They dart away so quick. You gotta be really quick. I always check. Because if I don't, hmm. Uh huh. I don't see him. Hmm. Got away. They're quick. Now, if you catch them right after they hatch, here he is. Right up against the front here. This is a little painstaking, but. Okay, they gave him that time. Can he get sucked up real good?
okay, yes. I do see him. He's at the top, right at the top of the water, where the water, see the water at the top of the... That's him, okay. So then what we do is, I just been doing this all week, so collecting, and I just put him in. Boink. There we go. So at this age, the reason I can do this every day is I, I'm just expecting the largest ones not to be big enough to eat the smaller ones if they're within one week eight, one week of age to one another. So, because they're going to eat very, very small. And you saw that one was like a sliver. It was pretty long. Nobody would be able to swallow their fellow fish. So I leave them up to a week. We'll, we'll go every week. We'll start a new one. And we'll see where we go. Okay, there's the one that's just starting to swim. See how lame he looks? He's kind of... Okay, he just sticks to the side. That's one probably from yesterday or the day before. Or it could be the one I just put in there. They just hang on the side. But then they start swimming. Once they're starting to swim, they sometimes hang out in the uh, top crease of the water because they can hang up in there without having to swim, it's effortless because adhesion is pulling the water up the side of the glass and they kind of find a spot and just kind of stick there. Something I noticed about small fry, especially with the rams. When the rams go to the top, that's what they do. So what are we going to feed them now? The best thing is this is an overweek Old, so they're already ready for the um, baby brine shrimp. So let's go ahead and, and get some baby brine shrimp. So this has been percolating. I'm going to turn off the percolator, and in a minute we'll we'll drain it out. So I have this. This is a inline valve that I can use with one hand. It's one of the reasons I like this one is very easy to control with one hand. Turn it off, and then I also need to just pull it. Pull it off the end. There we go. I just pull it off and then I'm going to drain it from the same one. But by turning off the valve in the center, nothing's going to drain out until I open it back up. Alright, and then I like to put a one of these just to hold it there while I'm draining. We're going to have baby brine shrimp in a minute. Now, as far as the paramecia, I do have a supply. This is my latest Paramecia bottle. If you're new to my channel and you don't know about the Paramecia, check out my famous video on how to culture Paramecia. You can also order a starter culture from me at fisheasy.ca at look for the store. I will send it to the United States. I will send it to Canada and also great news I received yesterday some great news from our down under subscriber who ordered some and has received it and it's doing great so I know it works I can send this these little animals and there's quite a cloud in here they will go all the way to Australia in the packaging I send so you can see it's like a cloud. It's very highly concentrated. So you don't need to put a lot. And that's the good thing because the water is not fresh, clean water. It's been, it's kind of a little, um, little putrid in a way. Not, not too strong. That's what I like about paramecia and culturing them this way. Because uh, it's not very stinky at all. It doesn't produce an odor. But let's get some. What I do is I'm going to use this uh, turkey baster that has a tip on it. This is what they call a no drip type of uh, turkey baster. Uh, it's a little, little more expensive than your regular one, but but this is how it works. So it has a it has a trap door. Watch. I'm going to suck up. There we go. Look at it. It's going right in. So I got a baster full. And um, so I just let it, you know, drip, drip from the surface but it won't pour out it's not pouring out it, it's a non-drip and I like that so what we do is 
every day I will introduce paramecia to the to these guys and it's because like we just put a baby in there so for one week I'm going to be just feeding some paramecia but it turns out that the next stage is to give these guys something a little more meaty now of course these older ones are now big enough to eat the baby brine shrimp so now that our baby brine shrimp is is kind of settled shells are at the top i'm going to go ahead and start the process of draining so i just turn this i have a big long loop so it's going to drain all the way down to the floor level of the sink and then back up and what that does is when it gets to the end the shells won't be able to go all the way down and go back up because they're at the top and there's no water to push them through so they just kind of get caught in in the airline and stop they never make it into here and so it's 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 so easy because I just walk away I can come back of course I like to put uh, I have a um, this is my airline I like to put some airline there if I walk away I'm not gonna walk away right now though I'm gonna get some let's see if we can snag a little bit now that it's already in there just a little bit I just I'll show you how much I'm feeding this is this is the key don't overfeed at this stage they each each one of these fry you look at these fry they don't have big stomachs how many do you think they're gonna take not many not many at all so I'm just gonna put in here um, let's see let's just put I just what I do is I just I have this of course full of let me knock some off it's too much okay so this has got some on it but as you can see it's um, all I need to do is just touch the tip into the water so let's see if I can do that. I'm going to try this with a uh, one-handed, a one-handed, one-handed action. Okay, I'm holding the camera and the brine shrimp in one hand, and in the other hand I'm lifting the lid. Now watch how much I put in. Whoa, that's it. That's it. Now, do you see? I don't want to contaminate by overdoing it. You see. I don't want to go hog wild crazy, but I do that twice a day, and that's sufficient. Look at them. In a few minutes, you'll see their bellies kind of get orange and full, and they will be enough. And after they're finished eating, you will still see lots of paramecia. You're going to see lots of paramecia. There we go. My focus is going in and out. Oh, look at the meat. Chomp, chomp, chomp. Yummy, yummy for the tummy. So what we're seeing here is getting a full meal with such little amounts. And what that does is it gives them time to digest and the water doesn't foul. You see? That's the key. And it's salt water anyway, so I had to use the, the, the filter. Now, on the other one, th their mouths are too small, right? So the paramecia that we introduced should show up there. Oh, thanks for the paramecium link. Yep, that's how you culture it. Thank you so much. Um, I'm going to, where's my flashlight? Here we go. See if the flashlight will help. I don't know if it will because I have such bright light on there, but we're going to see if we can see the amount of paramecia after we introduced it. We can see if we see anything in the water. Let me add a flashlight behind. That always seems to do better when you do that. Shine from behind. I'm looking at just the water in this tank. I see a lot of little creatures zipping around. There we go. Now look at this. We are looking at the water and there goes a fish swimming by right now, one that's just learning to swim. Let's look, maybe the fish are at the top. There we go. 
And so what you're seeing are those little white specks floating around. That's paramecia. But look at the size of them in comparison to the fry. We know the fry are small, but but they're going to just start feasting on those because that's all they can eat. I, I'm going to also give them one other item. Now, I have a choice. At this stage of the game, there, that's a better shot. I just backed up a little bit. You see the fish? You see the paramecia? It's like a little, it's just like a dust particles. And the nice thing is the paramecia stay alive and they just float around until eaten. So they will feast on that all day long. That's why it's the perfect food for small fry. Those little fast zip zippity doodah creatures I see, I get them, they're all in my tanks. They're like, um, I don't know what they are called, but they're like little flies zipping around. They look like a fly and they just, see how they hang out on that? There's one right here in the front. I don't know if you can see it, right in the center. But they're super fast and they don't usually get eaten because they're just too, oh, this little one just landed. See, they're like flies. Those things are in every tank. Totally harmless, but anyways, uh, looks like we got a good batch here. I'm really impressed. Okay, so what's the other next food item that we can put in there? Now, I have a choice of two items. So the second item that I will often do is uh, in the morning or the night, one or the other, you can use micro worms or you can use vinegar eels in this case um, I've got I've got two different sets of fry to to worry about tonight we're worrying about this right now I also have some catfish behind us that I I was able to glean this week we'll take a look at those in just a moment but let's think about it. Um, vinegar eels have to go to the top. So they wiggle, 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 wiggle to get to the air. They always go to the top and they go down and they're in the, in the water column. That's what they do. They go back up and down. That's a perfect food for a fish that hangs out at the top. So if your fish are at the top, vinegar eels is the way to go. So here's my vinegar eel setup right after here's our baby brain shrimp we just made there's the vinegar eels and there's my uh, funnel and uh, we can produce vinegar eels the only thing is I don't want to introduce all of those all of that vinegar so I have to filter it out hi Jeff welcome late Friday night on the 13th of January so glad you could join us we we've been um, we've been feeding these f new fry some great fry just for those who are just joining us these are from our egg trap and they're doing great and we've got um, probably Danios or we've got CPDs but honestly I don't know which one but if I were to guess by their behavior, I would say Daniels because Daniels have a tendency to go to the top. Whereas the CPDs might not. They might be hanging near the bottom looking at the detritus, picking it about. That's that's my guess. But I don't know. Can't say for a certainty. So let's, let's think about this. Um, we could use the vinegar eels on these fish, but over here... I wanted to show you what I pulled out of the catfish trap. Uh, we've got some fry in here. Um, I don't know how well they're doing. I've been kind of ignoring them for a day or two while they hatch. There was a lot of eggs, but they were ha needed to hatch. So I've got a lot of eggs that weren't hatched. Oh, oh, there's a lot of fry there. See how they're kicking around? Just stir up a little bit here. 
these, oh man, lots of fry. Looks like we're gonna have a good batch. These are lucipinus. Okay, so in this case, I haven't fed them yet, but it's time at the rate that they're zipping around, they're probably gonna need some food. So what we're gonna do with them is we're gonna give them microworms, a little different. We're gonna give them microworms. It won't do as good to have food like paramecia. It won't do good. It won't do as well, I should say, with paramecia or vinegrails. In fact, I don't recommend the vinegrails, too acidy. But uh, for these fry, we're gonna go with the microworms. And I could also put in there um, and start putting a real tad amount of powdered micro food. And the Sara formula is what I use. Okay, so in order to show you about how I do the microworms, because that's what the topic is tonight, I'm going to put the phone down and we're going to take a look at the microworm section. So these are my microworms. And uh, this, this batch was made on December 1st. They're not crawling up the sides. Hope you can see me. But they're not crawling up the sides. So let me change the let me change the camera around. This way I know that you can see me. I'm not talking to okay there we go. So what we're gonna do is I'm going to show you how to extract the microworms in the best way. So they're all, they're all over the top of this thing. Let me pull off the lid. Show you what it is. David Small, thank you for joining us tonight. It's a late Friday night, I know. Whoops, wrong camera. Okay, so this these are the microworms. As you can see, they're on the top. Now, if you look real close, you will see them scintillating. I have to hold the camera still, but if I do that, you'll see how many worms are on the top. Billions. Frankly, just billions. So, how do I get the, the, the worms, the live, the live food, out of here and into the, the trap without causing any issues with the media, or in other words, getting the, um, the substrate, the substance, into the water, because that will contaminate, right? It's a very simple method. I'll demonstrate that now. I take a piece of paper. It's a paper towel. Here's the paper towel. It's the kind of paper towel you find in like public restrooms and so forth. It's not the very absorbent. We don't want the very absorbent kind. We want the paper kind. You might even be able to use newspaper. I don't know. But this one has some texture. Let me see if I can get a close-up of it. See that? Yeah. See, see the texture? It's like little pillows type of texture, but it's, it's very thin and, as you can see, just like paper. Now, let me show you what I'm going to do. I'm just going to lay it down on top. Okay. Oh, the lights went out. Okay. Still see me, right? So then, after I lay it down, I just pull it up very slowly. And now, basically, I got the moisture off the top with billions of worms attached with very little, if none, of the media. I use uh, instant paper, uh, instant mashed potatoes for the uh, media. Put the lid back on. It's a little smelly. That's one thing about microworms. Alexa, fish room on. Okay, they back and running. Sorry if I just turned your fish lights on all over the world. Of course, uh, one day I'll show you how to set that up so you can have uh, Alexa do it for you. But I want to get them off the paper now. Now I can. I do try. Oh, you're welcome, Alexa. So I could probably just dip them into the container, into the to the fry box. 
but that's a little uncontrolled. So what I'm going to do is turn the camera around and I'll show you what I do. I want to keep it controlled. So I take, put the airline, line shrimp, that finished up, I'm going to remove the tubing. Oh, I should show that to you. I will in a minute. Okay, so I take a container, and I take a container, this one will have something in it, wash it out. I'm not going to use tap water. I'm going to use water that I've irrigated for 20 years. It's like water that's good for fish tank. Phillips, I use it for water changes here in this level here. It's, it's water that's been sitting there room temperature. And now I'm going to just pop it in the water and then rinse it. I think the biggest mistake a lot of people make is they think, oh, I gotta get the food to the fry, and, and you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna douse it with you know a, a teaspoon of this and a teaspoon of that, and and unfortunately, what they do is they create situations where the water is contaminated with so much fouling food, and then they lose the batch. Now I just dumped it. We're gonna take a look here with my flashlight. See if you can see this. All right, this is the water, and there's the microworms. So you can see there's billions of microworms. If I had dumped that thing in there, I would have more microworms than I knew what to do with. You know what I mean? So it's way too much. So I can feed this to a lot of things around here. And what I'm going to do is the same method of controlled feeding by taking a baster and using the baster, take some out, and there you go. Now, I, I could put some in here. These guys are big. Now, I'm going to put some drops. I just put a little bit, not even though. Not even a. Let's see, that's uh quarter of an ounce is this much. I put like probably an eighth of an ounce. And I just did, because I just had the, big, the baby brand shrimp, so, but I just put some microworms in there for those who want to, they'll, they'll last a day or two and it wriggling around in your tank, but they will eventually die because the microworms have to be able to get out of water eventually. So now, let's give our, um, change the camera around again. Okay, so now what we got here is still have the container. So what I'm going to do is feed the, this is their first food. So I'm going to feed these guys, but I'm going to just put in one baster full, perhaps. Yeah, one baster, no more. So I, I just put billions in there, you know, I mean, millions of these little guys. I don't know if it's millions or billions because I forgot to count them before I put them in. But uh, I'll leave that up to you in your endeavors. So here we have it. I still have a ton of this and it's lots and I can pour this in. You know where, who really loves to eat this is Corydoras. So I can throw it in with my Corydoras and they will go berserk. Because the microworms settle to the, the gravel, they don't dig into the gravel because they're not really an aquatic worm. And so the Corydoras would just like on top of the gravel be sucking up all these little microworms and they just, you can tell they're eating them. You can't see them eating them because the microworms are micro, you know, too small. But that's, that's the fun part about this, is um, you can see the fish enjoying themselves and having to work for a meal at the same time. They love it because they're going crazy. They're going everywhere. Bah, bah, bah. So this is a good thing. So that's all I need to do until I think or feel like maybe I would do this once every day, that amount. 
and no more. No more because there'd just be a lot of dead ones that are going to die, but um, maybe once a day because they will die and there won't be any live ones. So I like to have the live ones because that's what's going to stimulate the fry to eat. So that's how we feed. That's the first feeding of our our um, our um, pseudo. Uh, Synodontis lucipinus right there. A good batch that we got. These guys are waiting for dinner. They're up, they're ready to be put into a larger tank. Um, but I do have a drip system. So they're getting, as you can see here, you can see the drip. Yep, yeah, you can see the drip. They're getting dripped constantly. And it's been like constant for a few weeks. Just drip, drip, drip. And that keeps the water in here fresh and really never really able to go bad. So let's grab some brine shrimp. We just we just made some available. So let's try and grab some and I'm going to pop it in there. So what I love about this device so I can just quickly filter it out by you know scooping some up. And that's what we got right there. A ton of it because these guys need their dinner. And they're ready to sleep tonight. They're going to sleep. One thing about blue rams, they will sleep. I mean, these guys get their bellies full and they just go to the bottom and sit there. There's not much else they can do. They're kind of one of those fish that probably overeats. And I guess most fry do because they want to take advantage of the fact that they have some food in front of them. So they eat, and then once they eat, you know, they they, they're like their tummies, just like an after Thanksgiving meal. You just kind of roll around and sleep it off. So that's how I do that. Now, I do have some fry up here. Um, those are also fry. Thank you, Jeff, for the reminder. Yeah, if you like this kind of uh, videos, please subscribe. These are Fricatus Rainbows, Pseudomugal Fricatus PF. So, um, it looks like this is about all I'm going to get out of this batch. Uh, I see there's probably about, what, 10? No more than 10. So it's time now to pull out the mops. I boil them. I dip them in boiling temperature water is what I do. And then that kills any planaria and the other uckies and yucky stuff. And then I just put the mops and reuse them. I actually let them dry. I hang them up on the wall. Looks like I'm down to one, so it's time to get some mops out of here and start putting them back in. So I put the mops, rotate the mops on Tuesdays and Saturdays. And here's a trio of fricatus. They uh, maybe they think they're going to get fed. I don't know. They come up to the front. Where's the boys? Oh, here he is down there. Okay. And then I have another trio over here, same thing, mops. So I'm trying to breed up with some numbers on the fricatus. I sold a bunch a while back and probably sold too many because then I didn't have a lot for myself. But uh, it's, a, it's a reverse trio, two males and one female. It seems to be the better combination on these kind of rainbow fish. And the mops uh, will be rotated for a few weeks, and then, then I start a new tank. So this one, uh, I will stop putting mops in here and grow these out a little bit. So I just use my little handy-dandy brine shrimp feeder, put a dab in there, and they will gorge on those, and they keep growing. They're slow growers, but they're growing. So that's, uh, that's the latest tonight. I hope that was very helpful for from a standpoint of uh, seeing how I do some live foods for very small fry. Really, the best way to go is, I, I'm telling you, the best way to go is paramecia for the super small ones. Now, when I get fry in a tank like this, this is a five and a half gallon, the ones right here. I have to turn the camera down a little bit if it doesn't, my phone doesn't fall. So when we're breeding this week, we might have some breeding going on in these tanks. I have four of them lined up here. 
And then these four tanks, I'm going to clean them out. I'm going to set them up and then put some pairs in there. My males and female barbs are separated. And I've got um, um, tiger barbs and I've got hexazona or pentazona barbs. And I'm going to... I've been thinking a lot about it. And you know, it's interesting that I did mention before that I was going to do four pairs of green tigers and try to do it that way and then if one of them doesn't take I can use that tank for something else. But I started wondering what would happen if um, I did one tank, just one, maybe one of them for the pentazonas at the same time. So that way um, Well, I'm thinking about it. I think it depends on um, how many pairs I actually have of green tiger barbs. Now, I'm going to explain to you why I say it that way. You may say, well, you know, how, you have a bunch of green tiger barbs, right? Right, Michael? Okay, yeah, I have a bunch of green tiger barbs. These are most of my males. There is a female or two in there. But, um... I'm going to mention this to you. Not every fish is ideal to breed from. So oh, I see one really nice guy. There's a beautiful guy. Yeah. Look at him. He's, that is a gorgeous fish. So I have several in here. I might. I, the question is, do I have four males? I only see. I only see three. There might be a fourth one. I have to really look close, but I only see like three that are really worth it. And I want only fish that are like in good form, good shape, bright red ventral fins would be preferred, and uh, and as much green coverage as possible. So that's what I'm looking for, right? So I'm going to take maybe how many males I have there. Let's look at the females. Let's see what I got going down there. Because I don't know about the females. We need... Uh, that would also depend. How many... These are my girls. How many do I have? One. I should have pulled out a female from that other, you know, tank and put them in here. That's what I should have done. Looks like... Um, for green tiger barbs... I only see three females. Hmm. Well, folks, there's the answer to the question. Let's go with three. Three pairs. I got three females. So what we'll do is we'll do three females. Um, I do have, in the future, we're going to take a look at these green tiger barbs these are gorgeous green tiger barbs uh, the ruby barbs are a more recent acquisition and the reason I'm not gonna focus on those is because I need to take the males and females and separate them first and once I do that the separation then I can put them together for an expect expected results um, I could just pick out a pair and put them in the tank, but you know what? They may not uh, be ready. But when they've been separated for a little bit, they're ready. And that's what I do. I create a longing. So these green tiger barbs are what we call platinum tiger barbs. They're gorgeous. Especially in a group. And they're they're gorgeous. And they 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 really look nice. So I'm I'm gonna be focusing on those. But right now they're in quarantine still. All these fish are in quarantine. And also, after they pass quarantine, they've got to be conditioned up. But let's focus on the green tiger barbs, because they're, they're my uh, regular stock. I've been breeding several generations of these, and uh, picking out the best ones. So, let's do that again. Let's do that, and then what we could do is, um, yeah. And we're going to do that first, and maybe one tank with the pentazonas. Or... I have one other choice. I have a pair of rosies, but are you still there, Chris Stubbs? I don't know if you're still there. Maybe you 
got late for you, I'm not sure. For you, it's probably uh, time to go. It's now been one hour. But uh, what I really want to get is uh, some long fin rosies. Sorry about that. I want to get some long fin rosies because I had those when I was in California. Those are just beautiful fish. And there's something about them, the way they dance with the long, long fins and the colors of the uh, rosies are really nice. So I, I know, I think you have them, right, Chris? That would, that would be nice. Craig's Catfish Cave is informing us about his whiptail fry still alive. I am very impressed. Thank you so much for that update. That is amazing. Um, I'm looking forward to finding out more from you, how you do it. And thank you, Carla, for the mention. Uh, yes, sharing videos like this one on social media, of course, is the best way to get the word out. It really is. Now, um, to, to answer that that question is, uh, there, there's the chance that, you know, I, I do have these um, regular finned rosy barbs, but they're such a cheap fish, they're very easy to breed. Uh, in the end, I won't have much use for them. There won't be a big calling for them. Um, that's why I have the pair, but I really just got the pair to find out if they would eat black beard eel algae, because that's what everybody says. But I think you have to put them in a tank with black beard algae and then stop feeding them, kind of make them hungry. I think that's the only way to really test them out, because mine don't seem to like attack the black beard algae as though it were a, a wonderful morsel or like dessert or anything it was just so that's that's how it that was why I have that pair but um, I really would love to get some of the, the long fin rosies again those were really nice I had to um, when I when I left California and moved to um, Ontario Canada of course I couldn't take any fish I was traveling across the country and driving and uh, that wasn't possible, so I had to give up some really nice, you know, that's that's one thing that kind of hits right there, you know. We all love our fish, some of our pets, are, but some of them are just our favorites, right? I know we all have favorites, and that's what my favorite was. So I wanted to uh, also make mention of uh, Scheller Aquatics, who put out a video. Thank you so much, Scheller, for um, a wonderful video on his experience with discus and deworming. And it was a video that probably was from yesterday. Go to Scheller Aquatics, and that video I recommend. I learned a lot. I learned some things like, well, it's not like I didn't know, but it's one of those things where uh, you know, for example, I really, I knew that levamisole is a, a chemical used to fight. Oh, thank you very much, Chance Larson, for the super chat. That is great. I do appreciate your kindness. It really shows that, that you really appreciate the, the kind of information we, we go over together. And uh, please... By all means, leave a message at the bottom if you have any ideas or, or what you want me to talk about. Anyway, to get back to the story, the Levamisol, I knew, is light sensitive. You keep it in a very dark bag, right? You, you keep the light from getting to it. But I've used it in the past and I put it in the aquarium and then I turn the lights on real bright, you know, to check the fish out or whatever. And he's saying, yeah, remember, it's light sensitive. So when you put it in the water, it's still light sensitive, so don't don't turn your lights on, you know, just kind of try to subdue the lighting. And I thought to myself, how come I didn't know that? Well, I knew that, but I didn't think of that. You know, that's some of the things. And, and it's just like uh, what I told you tonight. I mentioned some things probably about feeding that most people, yeah, I, I knew that, but, you know, I always thought more is better, so I always put more. <laughs> but more isn't always better when it comes to... Um, 
Uh, more could be contamination. It could be overdosing. It could be overdosing on the food. So it's it's a controlled and timed method. That's the best way to feed small fry. And then um, as time goes on, you also find the water quality. You can start increasing the amount of food you got. You're giving him. If you have something like this setup, where this is. Um, Thank you very much, Jeff, for posting that Shelter Aquatics video. And I hope that's the one that he just posted on the deworming. Yeah. So this is uh, having this kind of method where the water is actually being constantly flown. Now, maybe, maybe you didn't really know. It flows into this box. Then it overflows into the tank. And then the back of the tank, I don't know if you can see it, each one of these tanks has an overflow at the back right here pointing it out. It has an overflow and then the overflow goes down the drain. So I'm actually flushing or actually re giving a water change to the breeder box and the tank behind it, a drip system. And that will prevent the, that will definitely prevent the water from going bad. And because the fish don't get swept over because the holes that the water goes into are covered with uh, sponge, this kind of uh, sponge material that that goes over your well, yeah, sponge material like. And what's this? Funny question. For any U.S. American in chat, do you use one dollar bill coins or one one dollar coins or one dollar bill more? Well, that's a good question. I mean, I know it was for the chat, but, you know, I've only lived in Canada for, since 2018, I've lived my whole life in the States. So, um, every time they come out with a dollar coin, it never seemed to circulate much. People didn't like them because they're heavy and stuff. But here in Canada, that's what they use, dollar coins, even two dollar coins. So the smallest bill you can get is a uh, five dollar, and everything else is coins. So here I'm using it. You know what? Coins in, in either country seems to be um, seems to be that everybody always prefers bills because they're just lighter, easier to maintain. Yeah. So um, that's, that's the method that I feed, and that's the met method I use for water changing. I like to change the water gradually, and now we have a, um, um, a different system for when you get a lot of fish and you need to change it quickly. This is, uh, I'll show it to you now, this is the siphon system, and so that siphon in the back is full of water. Right now there's a little red lizard pleckle on it and uh, it's full of water and it goes over the tank you see the if you can see in the back there is here's your overflow and it goes down to a valve that's located somewhat lower so here's the valve Let's see if I can get it in the picture there they are so if I want to do a water change all I'm going to do in this case is turn the knob see you see we'll do it right now it's so easy I'm going to just turn the knob I'm now sucking water out of the tank. No fish are being harmed in this process of this video. I can hear the water rushing through the room. It goes down to the base of the floor and then it goes around the entire room to get to the floor drain. But the water level is dropping. So that's how I use... Uh... Yep. That's how I use the water change system when I have bigger fish, lots of fish, and I need to change their water. This this tank gets changed about half, one-third, maybe one-third every day. If it ever should get a little cloudy or look like it needs it, another water change on top of it. So now I just turn off. Let's just see my hand way down there. I'm going to grab the... Okay, here we go. I'm going to now stop it and I'm going to refill. So I have water here and we're going to just put it there 
turn the knob again because I have a tank of water up here. It's been conditioned and it's all set. Turn the pump on to get it even going faster. And so in the time it takes to say lickety split, I've done a water change. So that's uh, another way to do it if you have more more water more fish in the water than really should be you just have to change the water a lot until you can get them into their bigger tank they need grow out space that's for sure so thank you very much for the questions and uh, also the opportunity to be with you tonight I know that uh, the fish everywhere, there's always something to talk about and uh, I, I'm anxious to show you the progress on our, our egg trap to see how it works for the next week. I'd like to know how much production I can get out of it and yes I do have grow out space. It's not actually here located in this room. My grow out space um, is also full. And um, we counted, I think today, we were close to 110 tanks at the grow out space. And there's probably, in this room, there's probably close to 60 tanks. I'm guessing I, I did count. Stop my water change. Foy overflow. And so, uh, yeah, I've, I've, um, <laughs> so I've, uh, I maximized everything. And the only way to keep breeding fish now is to sell fish so we've got fish at the end of the line that are now at the age where they can be sold and so we're doing that the best we can so there's plenty of if anybody's interested in angels discus um, just so you know uh, there's a new we're putting out a new um, website and it's under construction but you know they always are until they're done right but if you look at the YouTube channel, Aquarium Biz, Aquarium B-I-Z, Aquarium B-I-Z, Aquarium Biz, if you look at that YouTube channel, those videos, all those videos are the fish for sale. So it hasn't been really promoted really extravagantly that way, but if you just go there and look to see what's there, there's a few videos. Now tomorrow I might be taking some more videos and posting them there because we probably have I would say close to eight different species and hundreds of fish available. So that's that's why um, I, I need to take a lot more photos and post them but I will do that I will do that and so take a look check it out it's a YouTube channel if the fish no longer are available we take out we remove the video the spoiler what's coming up well thank you mayor I'm glad you stayed to the end um, what's coming up is an unboxing and um, and it's on the subject of uh, heaters and so that video is going to be made um, sometime in the next few days and so be on the lookout for that spoiler alert and uh, we're going to cover that hopefully everybody's had their experiences with heaters I know I have and tragically I've lost fish so Thank you, Craigs, for your sub and your comments. Also coming up is uh, the Big 2000. I, I'm really, really looking forward to it. At the rate I'm going with new subscriptions, it appears that uh, we're going to hit 2000 um, in the next few months. I, at the rate we're going, it's uh, just snowballing. So I, the other day I looked at it, it was 1700, and then I looked again, it was 1800. So. I don't know how the word gets out, but I have noticed that the best way to get the word out, if anybody's interested in this kind of content, con, um, content 
that all you need to do is to um, um, share videos with others. Let them know. And like tonight, you know, Scheller Aquatics is a good channel. I learned a lot from him. Uh, I also, of course, I've, I've been demonstrating Blake's Aquatics, some of the products he has, and I really enjoy several of the different what uh, website or channels out there, right? YouTube channels. So uh, I'm not going to speak negatively about any channel in particular because I think that everybody finds their own niche. Everybody finds their own personality and everybody will get something from anyone. And that's the, and that's the case. You know, I go places and I, I, I find it very informative. There are some channels that they don't ever state anything. They're just pictures of their fish and music. But, you know, I still like to watch those. And it's informative. And they're beautiful fish, usually. And I also understand that the people who post them probably don't speak English. So it's a way of getting the word out, getting to different channels from different cultures. And it, you don't have to be a uh, English speaker to be a fish fam. So for me, thank you all for being a great fish fam. And um, I, I, I like fish too, only in that I enjoy sharing what I know with others. And that's all really I can hope for. On Saturdays, Mr. Z is going to try to live stream. Um, I had somebody last week after this seven-year-old boy is streaming and talking about changing water. He demonstrates how to do it in his little live stream from last Saturday. And I had somebody un unsubscribe. And I thought to myself, somebody unsubscribed because of Mr. Z? I thought, okay. I I'm telling you, Mr. Z is got a good heart and he says he wants to be a fish he wants to be a fish keeper one day well we'll see you know so for those of you who haven't seen mr. Z's videos they're right here on fish easy the last live stream uh, was last Saturday if you just go down to my live streams and you see them you'll notice that if it starts with the words mr. Z it's him and not me so I do little talking if nothing on those because I really want to uh, how, how do you say I want to promote let him promote himself in a way that not not promote in a negative way but promote himself in in a way that let him develop thank you T-Shot thank you very much for the super chat it you know breeding Epistos is is similar to any other dwarf cichlid but but I haven't had the greatest success with the pistos. I've had them, but my uh, failure to have success hasn't been involving the breeding setups and so forth. It's been, for some reason, um, the fish have gotten weird ailments. Uh, sometimes they they'll get the the hole in the head, or you know, sometimes I've had them get sick and die. And what good is it? Or here's a here's one. I I got I got. Um, Four. What was it? Um, the McMaster eyes. No, I got six. I think it was six. And at any rate, they were all males. They all turned out to be males. <laughs> so you know, it's very hard to breed them when they're all males. So things like that keep happening to me. But one day, when we find the right one, I one of the fish that's kind of on my bucket list is uh, I'd like to get the McMaster eye. Um, red shoulder. I don't think they exist in Canada. I think they're in the United States somewhere, but it would be nice to get a source to be able to buy some and to have some and see if I could propagate them. But I think if, it, if I'm going to, to go with some epistogrammas, I would like to get something that is hard to find here in Canada because it's better, it's easier for me to find homes when they are um, um, you know, a little harder to find. Now that's beautiful. Orange Flash and Hogsville. You know those, I've seen those and I'm very impressed. So T-Shot, you know, I'm going to 
I'm going to expect you to tell us more about that in the future. And and uh, my my email is right there in the. You can you find it on the website fisheasy.ca, and you can send me a message. Send me some pictures or something. You know, that would be really nice. But there are some apistos that are super super beautiful, and I think they're worth it. But I'm not into the 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 ag agizi. Uh, uh, it's getting late, isn't it? <laughs> the uh, azizi, gazizi. Oh, you know what I mean. You know which ones they are. They got the reds, the triple reds, the double reds, and all those. Well, there's just so many of them, and so many people have bred those, and there's, they're just so prolific. And they're just so ubiquitous. But I, I want to, I want to find something nice. Now I tried the Borrelii, and I did well for a while. I, I was raising them. I was doing very nice with them, but one by one, um, the females would die. I would lose them, and I only have one small male left in my community tank, and he's just hanging in there. I raised him. He's in here somewhere. I'll, I'll feature him one day. Um, that's not a surprise, though, that a group of them could just one by one pass away, and then for some reason the last one never goes. Hey, wait a minute. Dave Fishcape, you, you, can't, you can't be soliciting for some orange um, fish flashes before before I get them right shouldn't I be the one to get the first dips <laughs> no go right ahead it's what we all get jealous for right we all want to we all want to get the the nice the nice looking ones so just so you understand that once in a while the last one never never dies I agazizi yes agazizi Thank you, Jeff. I guess easy. You phonetically spelled it out for me with all those consonants. I appreciate it the way you did it. Ag -Z, Z. Now, I have also another one -er, or one off fish. I have a dwarf golden barb. I had, I had, must have had 25 of them at one time. A big big group of them and they were neat because they are the tightest schoolers they are so fantastic together in a group I got a big group and I enjoy them very much but they're cooler water fish and in my warm room they didn't do so well so one by one they would die off one by one I did sell a few and then one by one they would die one by one I would lose another one one by one and then finally there was only one female left and she's been with me for probably a year and a half all by herself of course I'm not going to assume that she was the one who did away with the others but <laughs> you know it's funny because she's the last one and she doesn't want to die she's just been living here oh, I gotta show this fish to you I want to show you look at this she's in there the light is of course up but let's see if I can spot her there she is she's swimming around you see her, she's kind of floating right there, right there in the center, going to the right. She's by herself. There's some neo, uh, cardinals in here and some some more of the Daniels. But there she is all by herself. She's she's black and gold marbled. That's what they look like with uh, fins that look pretty much clear. And that's as big as they get. That They're dwarfs and they're very shy. I wanted to breed them, but... It's hard to do it with one female. Hard to do it. Well, that's the story of my life. Thank you so much, everyone. It's late, and it got started late tonight because I was doing some a lot of water changes earlier at the grow up place, and now I've come here. We've fed the fry, and I guess we can call it a night. So hang in there, and of course. Greetings to all you down under if you're just joining us because it's now Saturday morning for you. I hope you have a chance to watch the replay and let us know that you're watching the replay. We love all of our Aussie friends. You have some great fish down there too. Thank you and have a great night. And as from Fish Easy to all the fish fam and the fish tubers out there, just want to say a big thank you for all your help and especially those who gave some 
nice little tips tonight. That was very thoughtful of you. I appreciate it. And one of the things that I always say to everyone is keep it real. <laughs>